Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today, literally for me, moments ago, uh, Victor Arvidsson for the LA Kings was reactivated from injury reserve, and yeah, that's big news, obviously, for the Kings. Uh, if you guys have watched my previous video, you guys will know that I am not a fan of activating Arvidsson right now, but I understand the circum the situation in which why he's activated. Uh, first, there was an injury. Grunstrom, Carl Grunstrom, was injured with a lower body last game. And because of the injury, he was placed on long-term injury reserve. And as well as Blake Lazat was retroactive to when he got injured. So now that's two more players on long-term injury reserve. And Arvidsson comes off. Now, I'm a little concerned just because, is he 100%? I, I made sure to point out in my opinion that he should not come back if he is not 100% because we still have Arthur Kaliev who was scratched and he he's still healthy so you know I don't mind playing Kaliev regardless that we're not exactly playing good at all but is Arvidsson healthy we'll see we will find out obviously all Kings fans should be happy that he's back because he is a top six winger and he should be able to bring us the offense that we need. Now, uh, as far as I know, he lined up with Deneau and Moore, his usual line mates, on the second line. So that should look good. Um, per, I think, yesterday's notes, I, I saw or I heard uh, Kempe was on the third line with Dubois and Ferrier, And Fiala moved up to play with Byfield and Kopitar, which I actually like that move. Uh, if you guys remember from my last, if you guys watched my last video, you know that I criticized Kempe's play, and I may have not been paying attention as close as I should have, because again, he hasn't been uh, the top scorer we need him to be, and maybe he needs to be moved down because he isn't playing good. So we'll see. Um, as far as anything else is concerned, I don't think any other changes were really made, but yeah, let's just be happy that Everson's back. As far as uh, the presence, hopefully he comes right back. Obviously, people are going to say you can't expect him to score right off the bat. Well, unfortunately, that's kind of what we need. That's the whole point of him coming back, right? Is He's a top six player. He needs to come back. He needs to score. He needs to help the team win. And if we can't all rally around him, then that's not, we're, we're going to be losers. We're going to be kicked out of the playoff spot and not be in the playoffs. So... We have 30-something games remaining, so hopefully we get our butts in gear and, you know, get things rolling. Now, as, so I just real quick. So there we go. Arvidsson return. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations to him. Um, as far as the remaining games are concerned, it's not going to get easier, really. You know, it's a good mix of teams, and we should be able to beat some of the teams remaining in the month of February. Then we'll see where we are at. Um, by the end of the month, or going into March, uh, we will be at the three-quarter season mark. And obviously, I'll do another review on the season uh, at that time. But hopefully, this month of February goes uphill and not down. Because we really need to start winning some games. And hopefully, Arvidsson can bring that offense. Now, obviously, with these two out... Uh, specifically Blake Lazat, who has been out. We our PK, you know, it's still strong. It is absolutely still strong, regardless that our n best PKer is out. In my opinion, of course. Um, Gr Carl Grunstrom, he, yeah, he's out, but he hasn't been scoring, so it's not like it's that big of a detriment. Unfortunately, he is a bottom six player. I really thought. You know, based on the beginning of the season, I really thought both of these guys would be able to score more and provide more offense for the team. But unfortunately, as I pointed out in my uh, half-season review, both of them haven't been scoring since the first quarter. And that's something that the team needs. Bottom six scoring. Secondary scoring, as you would call it. So... Just real quick, I want to go over the stats. Blake Lazat on the season has 34 games played. He has 5 goals and 4 assists for 9 points. Um, it's not bad, but he got most of those points in the very beginning, the first quarter. And that was great, you know. For a bomb liner with 20 games under his belt, 
and having like close to 10 points, I would say that's pretty good, right? Um, especially with the ice time he was getting, he was getting single digits, barely breaking the double for a time on ice. But it is, you know, it's just how fourth liners roll, um, fortunately. And then uh, face offs, just below 50%, 48.6. It's okay. Again, if you guys watch Kings games, you'll probably, or if you guys don't watch the Kings games, how about that? If you guys don't watch Kings games, you won't know that, or who Blake Lazat is, or what he does. He goes up against the top line players a lot. We're talking like Crosby, McDavid, uh, you know, those guys who are great centermen. Blake Lazat literally goes up against them. And the beginning of the season, Todd McClellan would always put Lazat on TV timeouts out against the top line players. And maybe his faceoff percentage this year has suffered because of that. But overall, the fourth line was grinding it out in the beginning of the season. And again, that was when we were winning games. So the fact that Lazat and his line mates were the ones taking on the top line players after some TV timeouts just helped the team get energy, you know, helped provide energy, provide inspiration and momentum. So I, I did notice that when Lazat was out, he, you know, the team didn't do that as much. And maybe that's the reason why we're starting to lose is because he, he's a big part of the team and he needs to be in the lineup in order to help provide that energy. Not to mention if he's not taking the face offs against the top tier players, that means someone else is and maybe it's just not working out you know maybe we're not grinding them down enough and then uh, of course going on to grunstrom 50 games this season he has eight goals four assists for 12 points unfortunately he's a minus um it's not good again most of the players are starting to head towards those minuses obviously in the three-quarter review i will go over that but yeah he's not He's not providing the offense that we really need him to do. Um, I'm actually disappointed because, again, I said in my player review during the summer, he needs to shoot more. He needs to be more offensive if he wants to stay on the team and, you know, make an impact. Be on the bottom six and make an impact, right? I mean, we're supposed to have... We, the Kings, were supposed to have th uh, four good lines like throughout the, the entire roster. Everyone was saying it. The Kings are going to be a a deadly team but we're it's not showing anymore and it's we're honestly i don't i think we're one of the worst right now honestly the way we're playing i said the last game was we were playing like amateurs and it's really starting to show so hopefully the kings turn it around um again arvidsson in hopefully this will spark something in the team if not then i'm not going to be surprised if we start to lose even more games and hopefully everyone stays healthy because if we lose another top six player, then, or in this case, we're going to go now top nine because as much as I hate to admit it, Dubois is still a top tier player, just not, I guess, just not with our team right now. Um, but again, like I said in the last video, he did play better than Kempe this past couple games. And maybe he needs to jumpstart. Maybe he needs new line mates. I don't know. Bottom line is, Kings need to win games, and hopefully with Arvidsson in, they can do that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens tonight. We'll see what happens this weekend, so on and so forth. Uh, but for now, that's it. That's just an update. Arvidsson in. Grunstrom and Lazat are injury reserve. And hopefully we can get some wins. But if you guys like this video, hit the like button. Comment down below what you guys think. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more content like this. And of course, like always, go Kings go, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.